Hi everyone, there are two versions of this video. A short, quick drive with mostly voiceover and a more in-depth first drive report. If you're someone who thought the Volkswagen ID4 all-wheel drive first drive was too long, you'll want to go here instead of watching this video. But if you want to see me struggle with an off-road trail as well as getting altitude sickness, well, stick around. Hello from the Rockies. I'm in a place called Breckenridge. It's at 10,000 feet and it's seven o'clock in the morning and we had a frost last night, which is wonderful. It's mid-September and I'm gonna get behind the wheel of the Rivian R1T for the very first time. This is the first press drive event. I've been lucky enough to be invited on it. And so today I and some other lucky journalists are gonna put these trucks through their paces on and off road. I've been following Rivian ever since I first laid eyes on the truck at the 2018 LA Auto Show. And since then, it's been a real fun journey to watch Rivian as it's done stuff with pre-production vehicles that most production companies wouldn't even want to do. We saw Rivian send two very early prototypes as support vehicles for the long way up with Charlie Borman and Ewan McGregor. They traveled from the tip of South America all the way to LA and they made it despite being very early pre-production vehicles. And just last week, we learned that the Rivian R1T became the first electric vehicle to cross the United States off-road on off-road trails. Today, I get to do some off-roading. We've got apparently some great things planned. My head is a little fuzzy because altitude sickness, but hopefully we'll be able to share some of the experiences behind the wheel for the first time. Now, this is not going to be one of our normal reviews where I give you a full tour of the car and then I talk about it and then I take it out for a ride. Because this is only a one day event, we're just going to be capturing first impressions and hopefully we'll be able to do a full blown review at a later point. We've already had a chat with the team here at Rivian about trying to get hold of a truck to do that. There's gonna be other people in the truck with me as well. So there's not gonna be a lot of me talking to camera, but hopefully the stuff that I do do to camera will give you an idea of what it's like behind the wheel. Just over there, a Rivian is cooking breakfast. No, literally, they have the camp kitchen out and they're cooking a meal for us, breakfast on a Rivian. So I'm gonna go over and get some breakfast and then hopefully I'll feel a little more cogent. Being a first drive report, we didn't get as much time with the R1T as we would ordinarily get. So it is now time for a little voiceover. Unlike most media launches where you get to spend a few hours driving a new vehicle on paved public highways, the focus of Rivian's event was its off-road capability. So while I could go through the specifications of the front trunk complete with power lift or detail the twin 15 amp 120 volt power plus in the bed, the integrated bed cover, or in fact, the number of impressive accessories that you can get at launch, this video is going to focus on the off-road capabilities. And as you'll discover in a moment, the optional camp kitchen. But I am going to spend a little time talking about the interior based on the 10 minutes or so I snuck with the R1T the night before our drive. The cabin is really nicely finished in a range of different materials and is a really nice place to be with more cubby holes and storage than I've seen in a vehicle for a really long time. There are even under seat storage totes, coat hooks and a flashlight stored in the driver's door where you'd find an umbrella on an upmarket car like a Rolls Royce. It even recharges between uses. There's a large responsive center touchscreen display which gives you all of the access you need to vehicle controls, but which sadly I couldn't film during my drive because there were three other people in the truck with me. The screen felt intuitive and responsive to use and I didn't notice any perceptible lag. Bear in mind that we were driving what amounted to production validation trucks. The first customer R1Ts rolled off the production line while we were in Colorado filming this, but being production validation, they were identical to the trucks rolling off the line in normal Illinois that are headed to customers' hands. 
There's plenty of power in the cabin too for powering personal gadgets and the sound system is a really neat. It even has a party trick, the so-called camp speaker that can be removed from the center console and functions as a Bluetooth speaker when you're making s'mores around the campfire. Or should that be making food using the optional camp kitchen? So Ariane's cooking breakfast for everybody here today off an R1T. This is the optional camp kitchen that comes out from the gear tunnel. It's detachable, so if you do opt to have the camp kitchen and then you don't want to take it with you somewhere, say you want to go snowboarding and you want to use the gear tunnel to put your boards in, you can just detach this and leave it at home. It's got a two hob induction system here. And the nice thing about induction hobs is that as soon as you take the cookware off, everything's cool, which means you can pack away really quickly and hit the road again. You've got a You've got a sink back here and you've got storage for all of the appliances. You probably can't see this very clearly, but there's some lovely cork inserts here. You have a full kitchen. You've got your peeler, you've got your bottle opener, you've got your cutting knives, you've got your skewers for, for doing barbecues, you've got your plates, you've got your, your cutlery, and it all really nicely folds away after you're done cooking. You even get the cookware as well. So, this is something I think a lot of people are going to go for, especially if they buy the Rivian Adventure trim. And I think that this is something that we're going to see on trails in the future. Now, I love eating outside. I love cooking outside. And one of the challenges I've had is, especially in areas where there's a fire risk, cooking with, with an open flame is quite dangerous. There's no risk here. You're, you're not going to start a fire cooking on the camp kitchen. And it does mean that if you're somewhere where there's a ban on camp stoves, which we've got pretty much in the entire Pacific Northwest right now, it means you can still cook your food on the go. So I cannot wait to try some breakfast cooked on a Rivian R1T. I was really impressed with the camp kitchen capabilities, as you might be able to tell, and breakfast was a delight. But altitude sickness was already setting in, and because of that, I did opt to drive first. Our day's driving had planned off-road and highway driving for both drivers in each truck. The two other seats in each were taken up by folk from Rivian. And that theoretically meant that both of the journalists in every truck should have been able to test both off-road and on-road capabilities, which would have included Rivian's Level 2 Driver Plus semi-autonomous active safety assist system, which comes as standard on every Rivian and includes automatic steering, braking and acceleration on the highway, adaptive cruise control and lane change assist, as well as all of the usual warnings and anti-collision systems that are standard across the auto industry. But as you are about to find out, that didn't happen for reasons that will soon become apparent. To the truck. Like Tesla and other cars on the market today, there's a fully customizable display in front of you. It detects traffic around you. So I can see the, the R1T, the blue R1T in front of me right now. And as soon as it moves, I see it go bye-bye. All right, I'm going to be gentle right now. Fourth in line and vehicle six completed the left turn. Now there's an, a, there's an assistive technology on the steering, but it's very subtle. You can feel it kind of wanting to keep you on the straight and narrow. It's a decent amount of feedback. It doesn't feel too heavy and it doesn't feel too floppy. One of the things that's just grabbed me coming around that corner is I wish the seats had a little bit more lateral support. I feel a little bit soft there. Uh, it might be because of the lumbar adjustment. So let me change that. There we go. Now I've got a lot more in the way of support. Yeah, that's better. So at the moment we're driving on road, we've got an 11 and a half inch ride height if you're on the freeway and you're doing kind of the super efficient mode, you go into conserve mode and it actually drops the suspension a little bit. We were being told yesterday, there's actually two different suspension systems. So there's a hydraulic suspension system, which helps the car just settle itself in terms of, of pitch. And then you've got 
an air suspension system, which is the adjustable one that helps you give that extra ride height when you're off-roading. Right now, 11 and a half inches for a road like this is perfect. We can actually increase that, and we will increase that when we go into off-road mode. In terms of modes, you've currently got an all-purpose mode, which is what we're in right now. You've got a sport mode if you want to remap that throttle to give you a little bit of extra oomph. The conserve mode, which as I said previously, is about eking out your, your battery and getting as much range as you possibly can from the battery pack. You've got a towing mode, which obviously is designed to make sure that you can tow something. And then uh, you've got the off-road mode, which is what we're going to be making use of today. The Adventure trim is available in a variety of different colours, interior and exterior. Yesterday we had a light interior with an ash, wood effect ash. Today we've got a darker interior with a, kind of a camo green seats, which actually looks, looks pretty good, especially with the dark wood here. You get ventilated and heated front seats, which is a nice touch, especially on a hot day. The rear gets heated seats, but they don't get ventilated seats. And the rear passengers also get their own touch screen so they can adjust their own climate control. Like other modern cars coming to market, all of the climate control is controlled by the onboard computer, so there's no manual vents for you to operate. You have to do everything through the touchscreen display. But unlike a lot of HMIs in modern cars, this is really responsive. Actually really impressive about how quick it is to get to particular settings that you need in a hurry. They don't appear to be locked away. This is kind of one of those hard pack roads where we're starting to get onto a little bit of, of loose gravel. And everything feels pretty sure-footed right now. There's nothing that is making me feel particularly nervous. And you realize how, how good visibility is through this truck. Obviously one of the weirdest things about driving this off-road trail in an electric truck is that there's just very little noise. There really is very little noise. And we just went past some off-road machines that would be roaring up the pass normally and making a lot of noise as they go. We're just really creeping along. The only thing that you're going to hear is the noise of the tires and it makes the experience very different. One of the things I'm really appreciating here is that there's very little in the way of upset from the steering. The steering geometry is very, very precise. I know where things are going. It's not too loose and wishy-washy, which of course is really essential if you're doing off-roading because you need to have confidence to know that where you want the car to go is where it, it is going to go. So I should point out at the moment, we're still in all-purpose mode and there's nothing here that's making me feel nervous about this trail. The accelerator response is very good. I can ease right back off and, and really creep the truck along and there's nothing that's making me feel nervous. It's just steady and smooth. It's lovely. And you don't have to worry about gears either, which is the other thing, you know, normally when you're off-roading, you have to worry about what gear am I in, am I in high, am I in low? But right now it, it is very simple to off-road in the R1T. Being good trail stewards, we stopped to pick up an errant water bottle and right now we're in hold and it says release the brake first, but actually I was able to just creep away and move forwards.
This reminds me a lot of some of the farm tracks we had on the farm where I was growing up. Nothing like super nasty to worry about right now. And because of the, the massive amount of power that these motors have, you get regen braking every time you descend. Just ease off the throttle and the car takes control. We just switched into off-road mode and that just gives us a little bit of extra height. So we're now up at 13.1 inches, but that's not the highest that the suspension will go. So we've now got a different throttle response, which gives me a lot more finesse at the lower end. You're really able to just crawl the truck along and it doesn't feel like hard work. There's nothing I'm doing right now that makes me feel like I'm worried about what the, what the truck's gonna do. It's just keeping everything smooth and constant. I mean, that really is the key to off-roading anyway, is just making sure you look ahead, making sure you keep momentum up. And you don't make any sudden movements. It really makes a big difference when you've got an electric motor. So as we progress through the trail, we are starting to see larger obstacles and larger challenges, but this is nothing that your average family SUV would struggle with. But as we get onto the larger rocks, which we're just about to, this is at the point where most road going vehicles would go, nah, thanks, I'm all right, and give up. This is gonna be our first big rock to go over. So just gonna give it plenty of smooth power and off we go. Barely an inconvenience. Obviously we're driving the R1T, but the R1S is basically the SUV twin to this truck. So anything this can do, the R1S is also gonna be able to do. The damping on the suspension is, is really impressive. I did think there for a second we might hit the stops. Nah, nowhere near it. I've got to say that <laughs> the ride through this is just pretty decent. It's, it's better than I thought for a big vehicle with the weight this has got. It feels like a lighter vehicle. So we're climbing at a reasonable rate through here right now. And because this is electric, obviously, you don't have problems of lost power with altitude, which of course any internal combustion engine off-roader is gonna have. And that's a real benefit because it means it doesn't matter how high or what the terrain is, you're still going to get the same response off-road that you would if you were at sea level, which is just bonkers. So I'm actually going to go as slow as slowly as I possibly can just to show how good the throttle response on this is. And it is quite incredible how finessed you can be with the throttle. It's just keeping the truck moving, keeping everything going, no worries, no stress. Because you've got four motors, one for each wheel, it, you don't have to worry if, you, if one of the wheels starts to slip, the traction control takes care of it. That was easy. Yeah, so just been pointed out to me that you don't have to worry about hitting your drivetrain or anything like that. Everything's hidden up inside the truck. It does mean you've got some truly incredible ground clearance. As you can see from the Rivian in front. The only thing missing right now, honestly, is an altimeter and an inclinometer. 
which I would love as a bit of a homage. Maybe Rivian can add that as a as an app feature in the future. I think that would be really fun for those who are fans of old school off-roading but want to burn less dead dinosaurs in the future. Now we've we have dropped the pressure on the tires. We're running at 28 right now, which obviously helps with some of the load and makes it easier to go over some of these larger boulders and rocks without having too many problems. A little bit of uh, lost traction there, but nothing too major to worry about. All right, so this is our first bit of fording. It's not really anything to get excited about. It's just a few, maybe an inch of water if we're lucky. Everything is just very nicely set up. Doesn't feel like it's hard work. Okay. Let's give these guys a bit of a uh, bit of action here. Big boulder, so let's see how we handle this. Easy. Not even a problem. So we're now kind of coming up this section and we're actually using the camera on the front of the R1T to see the trail ahead. And it's a really great way of seeing what's ahead and what we can, what we need to worry about. There's some big boulders that we need to be careful of as we go through here. And if you'll forgive me, I'm just gonna concentrate on driving for a second. Oh, come on. Do you, wanna, do you wanna? Do you wanna? Do you wanna wipe the camera as well? Yeah, get out. Cheers, man. T6 uh, has micro hopping out, so you'd be able to film going through some of the features. Just a heads up to the crew. You good, you see? Yep. Maybe good. To a little too. Yeah, that's just what I was gonna do. I was like, I'd it's rather be more preemptive. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm being appreciate proactive. It. I appreciate your diligence. So we've just engaged rock crawl mode and in rock crawl mode the auto hold which we've been able to make use of up to this point doesn't work because that enables you to use two feet so one on each pedal and I've got to say that in rock crawl it really allows you to go a long way before you get your your throttle to do anything, which means you can really finesse what's going on. Look at that articulation. That is awesome. Come on, come on, baby. Little to the left? Little to the left, there you go. You keep it left as you go over that big rock right there. Come on. Come on, puppy. There you go. There you go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, come on, girl. You can do it. By the time we had arrived at our first rest stop, essentially a chance to nip behind a bush for a quick pee, the altitude sickness I was suffering was getting pretty bad. If you've never had altitude sickness before, it's like a really bad hangover combined with a bad asthma attack. I couldn't think clearly and I was hydrating, taking on electrolytes and liberally helping myself to emergency oxygen. I desperately wanted to continue and to tackle some tougher terrain, so I pushed on. So we're continuing up the trail. We had a bit of a biological break back there after doing some tougher climbing and going through a bit of a, a pass that we had to be spotted for. The rocks are getting larger and uh, there's nothing so far that this truck hasn't handled with quite a lot of panache. It's 
It's lovely. Now, on a trail like this, the R1T does have some party tricks as well. You have a spare wheel hidden under the bed of the truck and it's kept nice and clean, which is nice. And it's got a jack mode, so you can quite easily change a tire on the trail. And you get a compressor with the truck that you can whip out and change the tire pressure if you need to. So it's, it's really built, not just as a truck to handle your daily commute, but a truck that can handle your, your weekend fun as well. So just gonna pause here when we get onto this flat bit and uh, give some of the others a bit of space because got a bit of a backlog here. Just, just listen. <laughs> you can hear the water? Well, I can, you probably can't because you're, you're listening through my microphone, but uh, I can hear water, smell the fresh air, less oxygen than we would have at sea level, but never mind. But it's really beautiful. You can experience a whole lot more of the trail in this than you would if you had an engine running. So these mirror cameras that we've got um, on the side of the truck, really useful for, for, for seeing what's going on. And I've got the front camera up as well. It's a really good way of seeing what's coming and what's, what's beside the truck. And it makes sure you don't ding the truck up as you're going through. And I've got some, some larger ruts coming through here. So we're gonna get to test some articulation. Let's see how we do. Get in that bit there. Avoid that boulder, come on. Good girl, come on. Thank you. Sorry, I repositioned my foot there at the wrong time. There we go. Nothing so far has felt particularly um, worrisome in terms of articulation. There's been plenty of suspension travel and we've not kind of reached the limit at any point. Now, I don't know if we've got any table topping on this trip at any point. I'd be interested to see how this balances. I guess we'll find out a bit later. So we're now going to do some really fun articulation tests. We're going through a bit of a, a valley here and uh, let's see how we can do with this climb. I'm not going to say a whole much because I'm going to be concentrating on driving. It's not a very long section, I can see, but uh, let's see how we do. Come on, right, right, please. Right. Come on. No hitting the truck, no hitting the tree. Thank you. There we go. Easy peasy, other than that little snafu back there. Come on, baby. Good girl. Come on, give me some grip. Did I hit that corner there? No, nope, back wheels, no slippy. Thank you.
And that's where my driving ended. We'd reached our first driver swap point, and the idea was that I'd get to do some driving later on. After all, the Rivian R1T's massive 135 kilowatt hour battery pack had more than enough range to do several hours of off-roading, as well as a road trip into Denver some two hours away. Officially, the EPA rates the R1T as having a 314 mile range, and I have no doubt that in normal conditions it will achieve that. But by the time the cameras were switched off, I was in trouble, and a good half hour later, and several thousand feet higher, I was struggling to do anything. I managed to get myself out of the truck on top of a beautiful mountainside above the tree line to grab a coffee, but soon headed back to the truck as my head was splitting in two. Taking a puff of oxygen every other breath, I attracted the attention of one of the medics on the team, who was a former military chap, who told me in no uncertain terms that I was being pulled from the mountain. My lips were blue, I couldn't think, and what followed was an emergency evacuation. I was told had I been any higher, they would have called a helicopter, but they opted to get me down to base camp back the way we'd come and the several hours of climbing was replicated with a downhill rally. I think it took us about 20 minutes to descend to base camp, and the R1T I was riding in the back of was both quick and commanding as it scrambled back to lower elevations, although I wasn't really thinking all that clearly. At base camp, I still struggled. My oxygen levels were dangerously low, and I still had blue lips, so our original plan, which was to have me rest at base camp and then rejoin the adventure later in the day, was replaced with a two-hour emergency trip back to Denver and an emergency clinic where I was given the all-clear. Half the elevation of where my base camp was, my headache in Denver eased significantly, but I'm not going to lie, it wasn't until I got back home to Portland, Oregon the following day that I actually felt able to breathe normally. If I had to guess, I think I contracted COVID-19 early on in 2020, and after more than a month of being sick, I still struggled to breathe normally for several more. And since then, I've suffered from fairly regular shortness of breath, and I suspect I did some damage to my lungs. Whatever the reason, though, the Rockies and I did not play nicely together. But enough of me. What did I think of the R1T? From the short time I spent with it, I was impressed by its off-road capabilities, its quad-motor drivetrain, and finessed accelerator response. I loved the ability to monitor any of the cameras on the truck when off-roading to help get through a tough pass, and the ease of off-roading was frankly remarkable. I never felt in trouble behind the wheel despite having altitude sickness, and the truck let me know what was going on at all times. On the road, I really didn't get enough time to pass judgment, but I'm hoping we can get some time in the near future, especially as I'd like to see how it compares to some of the other plug-in pickups coming to market. The Rivian R1T is a remarkable feat of engineering. It doesn't feel heavy, it doesn't feel compromised, and it feels like it literally can do anything. Unlike a lot of first-time vehicles from startup automakers, it felt like it could have been made by one of the big three. It might cost a pretty penny, you'll have little change from 70 grand, but it offers the kind of features and competency that make it worth every dime. And in a world where pickup truck off-road aficionados pay double that for an off-road capable lifted trail crusher, I think based on my experience thus far that the R1T is worth its sticker price. Being first to the market gives Rivian some pretty nice perks, like setting the bar for all who follow, and frankly, I think Ford's F-150 Lightning, Tesla's Cybertruck, and whoever else wants to have a go have their collective work cut out. Electric off-roading is here to stay, and I'm in love. That's it for today. If you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and our two other channels, Transport Evolved Take Two and Transport Evolved Shorts. We know that while a fair few of you are already subscribed, many more aren't. So go on, hit the bell and help us out. Let us know below what you thought of the video. And if you're not someone who likes the YouTube comment section, who does, then why not continue this on our Discord server? It is free and we'll leave the link below. 
Thanks on behalf of the entire Teehee crew. Go out to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, David Janakula, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahoa, Brophy Wolf, Tazla in the Gong, Sean Ueda, Gordon C, Ray Jean Fellows, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ricky Leong, Brian... Newton, Laura Sanborn, Rory Litwin, and Denny Hyde, and our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, John Lyons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnik, Christopher Jones, Paul Conway, Ellery Hennersley, and Ian. If you'd like to join the ranks of wonderful supporters, you'll find links below to Patreon, Bitcoin, and Kofi. And of course, you can buy your very own TE swag like this shirt and our Red Bubble store. But before I go, I do want to thank again the team at Rivian for helping get me off the mountain. It really did make me realise how important, good, well-trained mountain rescue teams are. And I'm going to be donating some of my personal money to a mountain rescue charity of Rivian's choosing as a thank you to their team for literally saving my life. And if you are going up into the mountains, be prepared. Thanks for joining me. And as always... Keep evolving.